Colin just reminded me to get the video. Thank you, Zari, and thank you, Carla. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about what science class is going to look like. Then we're going to do an activity. The activity will have a video component to it, so that's why um, girls on Zoom, you might notice that you are a little bit higher and more in the middle because I'm going to be playing a video on the board. I'm hoping that it works. I will be turning the lights off, so luckily you won't have these glare spots from the lights in the room. Although this one I think might be from the window, but I'll close the window too. There will be a little bit of a glare, probably right around here. That's from the projector. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about it. I think what I'm probably going to do is see if it works. I'll just put a piece of paper here wherever the light from the projector hits so that hopefully that won't become a big deal. But we'll see how it goes. If not, if it just does not work, I will, I think your parents, I'm not sure if they can get on it on the website where I got this from because I do have a membership, but we'll see. I'll email them the link or I also have it being filmed on YouTube, which will not filmed on YouTube, but I'll put it up on YouTube and we'll see that may be better. But hopefully the video, you'll be able to see it and hear it and everything pretty clearly from home. So first, let's talk about what science is going to look like. You have a science textbook. We do, okay, so this is science and social studies time. That's because depending on what part of this, the quarter it is, that depends on whether we're doing science or social studies. Uh, make sure you're listening to me. Don't worry about your paper or anything else, like right now. So what we do is the first half of the quarter, so for about four and a half weeks, we do science. Then the second half of the quarter, for about four and a half weeks, we do social studies. So on Monday, we will start a regular social studies class, and that will happen, I'm sorry, science, and that will happen Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. After about four and a half weeks, or when we finish two science chapters, we will do two social studies chapters for about four and a half weeks. Um, girls at home, you have both textbooks, people at school, you have your science textbooks, and we will switch them out when it's time for social studies because they don't both fit in your desk along with everything else. So what so science will look like is we will try um, we we try to do one lesson a day. However, some of them are a little longer, so it might take us two days to get through a lesson. We should be able to finish two chapters in four and a half weeks. You will have a test at the end of each chapter. However, it is open book and open note. So just because it's open book and open note though, does that mean you don't have to study? Does that mean you don't have to study? Yes or no? Zari? No, you still have to study. You still have to study because if you don't know a thing, even having that book is not going to help you that much because there's a lot of information in the book. So you may get to a question and think, oh, I can just look in the book. Well, if you have not studied, you're, not, you're gonna have no idea where to look in the book, you're not gonna finish the test. So you still need to study, however, because you need to be familiar with where all the concepts are and all of that in your science and social studies test. You will have homework every night that we have, you will have science or social studies homework pretty much every night that we have those classes. Even the lesson, the science lessons that we split into two days, you'll still have homework both nights. One night will be a vocabulary homework. One night will be um, an outline. If we do a lesson in one day, you'll have an outline to do for homework. If we have to split it into two days, which several lessons are long enough that we do, you'll have vocabulary the first night, outline the second night. Now you may be saying, but Miss Follis, we didn't finish the lesson. How can we do vocabulary homework? Make sure your eyes and ears are on me, please. You may say, we didn't finish the lesson. How can we do vocabulary homework? Well, vocabulary in your book is all highlighted yellow, and it has a definition afterwards. We will be writing the definitions in our three subject notebooks, but you can do vocabulary homework because you don't have to actually read the whole lesson to do vocabulary. You just need to be able to find those yellow highlighted words and skim that little section. 
or read the sentence that comes after in order to do the vocabulary homework. The outline will only be assigned if we have finished the whole lesson because you do need to have read the whole lesson. We will be reading the letter, I mean, the lesson and discussing it together in class. And then you will go home and you will do the outline. Um, this is something I meant to say during math earlier and I forgot. If we finish, if you finish your independent practice early, it just came into my mind as we're talking about science of all things. If you finish your math independent practice early, you may start work on your um, math homework, but just the front. You can't do the front and the back. You can only do the front. The back is at home. Does everybody understand that about math? That is a math thing, even though we're in science. Math, if you finish your whole independent practice, you may start on the front of your math homework, but not the back. Okay, so any questions about what science will look like or what science homework will look like? Okay, oh, sorry. What if you can't um, really see the screen and we can't get to the website you got it from? Um, you don't have to worry about it. But hopefully we'll be able to figure it out. And hopefully, well, hopefully once I play it, you'll be able to see it. And I can move the desk a little bit forward if we need to. Smith, yes. Um, this goes for all homework, but will you give us like a list of all the homework we will have on like a regular basis um i can do that because mm -hmm. you'll have okay. every day you'll have math homework okay every day you'll have some kind of reading homework most of the time it's going to be a 30 minute reading log um once a week usually or once a chapter it will be vocabulary at least with the textbook okay. when we get to the novel study it's going to change a little bit but we'll talk more okay. about that once we get to the novel study and then I just wondered because yeah. I have a big binder that I can label oh, everything perfect. and like perfect. That's excellent. Yeah. That's way any way that keeps you organized. This goes for everybody. Do that. Um, and then every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you will have science or social studies homework. Okay. And then when once I figure out spelling, there will be spelling homework, but we'll see where that goes. And then everything else. The only reason you would have grammar homework is because you didn't finish independent practice. Okay. Um, the only reason you would have religion homework is because you didn't finish whatever we were doing in class. So religion and grammar, you won't have homework unless you don't finish what we do in class. But math, science, and reading, you will have some kind of homework. Once, we get, once I get spelling completely figured out, you'll have spelling homework. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about how science will go this year or social studies social studies will be pretty much the same but we'll talk more about that when we get to social studies okay so we're gonna try the video we're gonna cross our fingers that it's gonna work you will need this um, but the video and the lesson will tell us exactly how to do it the only difference is, in this little video, it's kind of like a mixture of videos and prompts and a little bit of discussion. The video does have tell you to get into pairs, but we're not going to do that. It's just going to be individual. You can still do it individually, just instead of talking to your partner, you can volunteer what you want to say and say it to the whole class. Okay, you ready? Yes, Cullen. They are my partner. Hmm? I said they are my partner. <laughs> kind of, I guess. I guess we will. We'll see. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's get into the video. So just give me a second. Zadie, will you turn the lights off with your elbow? And I will get it started. By scientists who study things like pine trees. Now, sometimes when I have a question, I find out that nobody knows the answer. And that's always exciting, too. But a lot of times, there are answers to things that I'm curious about. And it's scientists who figure them out. Girls, can you Somebody see in here? Somebody in has a question can about Can you see scientists. in here? Let's give her a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Marina. I have a question for you. How do scientists know so much? That's a great question. To answer this question, it might be helpful to think about what scientists do when they work. Let me tell you a story about two scientists whose discoveries changed the way people think about the world. 
You see this thing right here? You might know what it is. It's a telescope. And you know what a telescope is used for? To look up at the night sky. But it wasn't always used for that. In fact, when the telescope was first invented, one of the main ways people would use it was to watch for enemy ships coming from far away. No one had thought to point a telescope up at the sky. No one until this person. This was Galileo. He was a scientist. Galileo was curious, and he wondered what he might see if he pointed the telescope up at the sky. One of the first things he decided to look at was the moon. Night after night, he looked at the moon through his telescope. He wrote notes, and he made drawings of what he saw. He was amazed by all the details that he noticed. You see, before Galileo, most people thought that the moon was this round, perfectly smooth ball more like a beautiful nightlight rather than some actual place. But by carefully looking at the moon, Galileo noticed lots of pointy bumps and shadows. He compared his drawings to things that he noticed here on Earth, and he realized what he was seeing on the moon were mountains, valleys, and hills. The moon wasn't some perfectly smooth light. It was an actual place with mountains and hills, just like the Earth. Galileo realized Maybe we could even go walk around on the moon someday. Galileo gave us new ideas about what the moon was really like. Now, here's another famous scientist. Her name was Mary Anning. She's known for being one of the greatest fossil hunters in all of history. Mary spent almost every day of her life, ever since she was a young girl, searching along the beach for interesting fossils. One day, there was a landslide. A huge piece of the cliff near the seashore had fallen down. Mary wondered, what if I go look over there? If I look carefully, will I find anything new? Digging through the rubble, Mary noticed some really strange markings in the rock. It was the fossil of a large skull with lots of sharp teeth. As she unearthed the entire fossil and put its bones together, Mary realized that it was the fossil of a giant reptile that had once lived in the ocean. This was unlike any creature alive today. It was an animal that had gone extinct. All her life, Mary kept looking carefully, finding more and more fossils of extinct animals. Mary Anning gave us new ideas about what animals on Earth had been like a long time ago. Mary Anning and Galileo were looking at very different things. But take a moment to think about what their stories have in common. What did both of these scientists do that was similar? Okay, so what you need to know now, I mean, what you need to do now is just think about this answer. What do these two stories, the story of Galileo and Mary Anning, both have in common? Or what did, they bo what did both of the scientists do that was similar. So think about it for a second, and then if you have an answer, you can raise your hand and tell me. Zadie? Yes. Zadie, if I do this to you, that means turn them off. There you go. Or turn them off. Yes. Oh, well, I'll probably do this. Aaron? They both discovered things. They both discovered things. Very good. Carla, do you have an answer? Oh, don't forget to unmute yourself. You'll get used to it. They both had discovered something. Good, they both discovered but something. But one of them had drew it. Okay, good. Kingston? They were both curious. They were both curious. Very good. Was that your answer too, Zari? I mean, Zadie. I told Zadie. Zari and Zadie, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say your names wrong for a little while. It's like Marlene and Marlena last year. Zari, what's your what's your answer? They both found something interesting. They found some. They found what interesting? They found what they found interesting. Good. They found something interesting and they wanted to know more about it. Very good. Um, Carla, don't forget to mute yourself. Victoria. They changed the way how people. They changed how people thought. Excellent. Very, very good. Anything else? 
Okay, we'll move on to the next part of the video. So, or the next part of the lesson. So, Zadie. One thing you might have noticed is that both Galileo and Mary Anning started out being really curious about things around them. When they noticed something interesting or surprising, they didn't just say, oh, that's neat, and then move on. They noticed things and then paid really close attention. And here's the thing. When you start paying close attention to something, yes. you start wondering a lot more question. questions. Galileo started wondering things like, Thank you. what are those little bumps and shadows? What is the surface of the moon like? Mary wondered, what kind of animals did these fossils belong to? What does that mean about life a long time ago? You don't have to be a scientist to think like this. This is a drawing made by a young girl named Fiona, who decided to purposely take something plain and ordinary, these leaves, and look really carefully at them. As soon as she started paying close attention, she realized she had all these interesting questions. Drawing and paying careful attention to something is kind of like training your brain to discover interesting new things and ask questions. You should try it yourself. You can train your brain too. After this video is done playing, we have a special activity where you'll practice noticing something and asking questions like a scientist. See how many questions you can come up with. I think you'll find it's a lot of fun, even if you don't figure out the answers to the questions right away. That's totally okay. Scientists sometimes spend years figuring out the answers to questions they come up with. Even when you do figure out the answer to a question, you'll find it always leads to new questions. That's actually one of the fun things about noticing something interesting and asking questions. It just gets more and more interesting, and you start having more and more questions. That's why, at the end of each video, I always say, stay curious. There are so many interesting things out there to notice and wonder about. There are so many questions worth asking. So in summary, the reason scientists know so much is because they pay close attention to lots of things and they ask lots of questions. By doing this, sometimes they discover things no one has noticed before. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Barina, for asking it. Now, I hope you'll try the activity. Have fun and stay curious. So before we start the video, what I want you before we start the activity, what I want everybody to do is get their pencil and write your name and the date at the top of your paper. Once you officially have a number, you will write your name, number, and date. And remember, when I say name, what do I mean? Michaela, your full name, first and last. You do not have to put your middle name unless you're somebody like Massey Grace in second grade now, who her full name includes her middle name. So your first name and last name, not just your first name, because who just writes their first name? Third graders. Mm, younger than that. First graders. Colin, are you raising your hand? Who? Uh, who did I used to teach? What grade? Pre-K. Pre-K writes only their first name. Fourth graders write their first and their last name. So go ahead and do that, and then I will go start the activity. First and last name and today's date. Do not forget the date. In today's activity, you're going to train your brain to observe, wonder, and ask questions, just like a scientist does. Galileo and Mary Annie made drawings of their discoveries, not just because drawing is fun, but also because it helps focus your brain. So today, you'll be drawing and observing something that you see every day to find out if you can discover something new or surprising about that thing. As you draw, your challenge is to come up with as many questions as you can. I'll show you how to get started step by step. Find a partner. If We're you're working alone, this step. that's okay too. When you're done with this step, click the arrow on the right. Get your supplies. Depending if you're in a younger grade or an older grade, 
you'll use a different handout. You can do today's activity using any object. We chose to use something that you're likely to have around, a hand. We chose a hand because even though you see your hand every day, you might not have looked at it really closely before. So if you're going to use a hand too, hold up a hand that you don't normally use to write with. That's the one you'll observe today. You'll use your other hand to draw. So you're using the hand that you don't write with. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. So our left hand? If you are right-handed, you're going to use your closely. left hand. If you're left-handed, you're going to use your right the hand. Okay. Then bend your fingers and watch how they move. So you're bending your fingers. You're watching how they move. You're looking um, at the top and the bottom of your hand. Pay attention. Look closely. Something you probably never really thought about. Now, help your brain focus by drawing. It's tempting to make your drawing really perfect or pretty, but don't worry about that. The goal is to observe your hand closely and think of questions you might have. Everyone, put your hand down in the middle of your wonder page. Then, trace the outline of your hand like this. done tracing, give me a thumbs up. All you're doing is tracing. You're not adding anything else, like no fingernails, no nothing. Just trace your hand, and then when you're done, give me a thumbs up, and I'll go to the next step. If you're in school, hold it up high, like Colin and Victoria are. Sorry, I got you. Yes, Erin. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Smith. I think I said thank you, Zari. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Aaron. You already said thank you. Did I say? No. Kingston, did you do it? Are you finished? So remember, thumbs up. Up high. Up high. Up high. Up high. Up high. Thank you, Kingston. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Zadie. Okay, I'm going to start the next part of the video. You'll draw more details in a minute. But first, think of at least one question that you wonder about your hand. So, Older students, write this question on your wonder page. Younger students, share your questions with your teacher. They'll write these questions on the board. In case it's helpful, questions usually start with words like why, how, or what. So you guys, if you hadn't figured out, are considered older students. So you're going to think of one question that you have about your hand. Anything. Why does it move that way? What is it made out of? Whatever. And write it on your paper. When you're done with that, when you're done writing your question, thumbs up. And we'll go to the next part of the lesson of the lesson. Ethan, are you writing your question? Did you write your question yet? Think of one question you have about your hand and then write it on your paper. You have you know everything there is to know about the human hand? No. So think of one thing you don't know. Thank you, Zari. Um. Thank you, Smith. Thank you, uh, Carla. Cullen, do you have a question? What's your question? Can we cross out what we already used? Huh? 
So yes. Oh, 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 on the uh, the hint part? No, you don't have to. Okay. Thank you, Michaela. Zadie, did you have your thumb up? Thank you, Zadie. Thank you, Cullen. Thank you, Victoria. Yes, Aaron. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ethan. And Kingston, are you almost finished? Thank you. And thank you, Kingston. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next part of the activity. You're going to be coming up with lots more questions. So here's a little tip. To help keep track of all the questions that you come up with, use an arrow to connect your question to the part of your drawing that it has to do with. For example, if you have a question about your thumb, draw an arrow between your thumb and your question. Now, for younger students, since you're not writing out the whole question, you can just draw an arrow between your question mark and the part of your drawing that it has to do with. So whichever part of the hand your question has to do with, like if you had a question about your fingernails, make an arrow from your question to the fingernail. If you had a question about your knuckles, make a, an arrow between your question and your knuckles. If you had a question about your skin, just make an arrow from your question to maybe like just the back of your hand. Yes, Victoria. What about your, like asking, like how does your hand move? Where, what parts of your fingers, fingers. move? Hmm? Think, like. Where on your fingers. So what you would do, if you're asking a question about how they move, the you would draw up. an arrow from your question to the part of your hands that move. Anyone, you can pick one. Okay, I just pick one. Sure. Yes, Erin. Um, then you can palm? just point it, yeah, to like the part, the back of your palm, which is the back of your hand. Zari, what was your question? What if, it's, what if you're talking about your whole hand? Then you might just have to draw to any point on your hand. That's like the skin. You have skin on your whole hand. Yes, Kingston. Okay. Okay, when you're finished with that part, thumbs up. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Zari. Thank you, Zadie. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Cullen. Thank you, Smith. Thank you, Aaron. Ethan Kingston, you ready? Okay. Take your time. Thank you, Ethan. Kingston, you ready? Thank you, Kingston. Okay. Thank you, Carla. Okay, we'll move on to the next part of our lesson, our activity. Now, here's the really fun part. Look at all of your fingers really closely. Notice all those lines, bumps, circles, dots, any little details you can see. You're going to add those details now to your drawing. As you notice more details, you're going to start thinking of more questions. So older students, write those questions down and use arrows. Younger students, you can just put a question mark. Okay. Zadie. Okay. I turn the lights on so that you can see your hand really clearly. So as you are drawing, you're drawing more things that you notice, like don't forget the wrinkles on your hand, your fingernails. If you have any funny spots or lines, draw those. And then as you're drawing them, you're gonna come up with more questions. So once you notice something and you have a question about it, write that question, draw an arrow to that part of your finger, and then keep drawing. I'm going to give everybody three minutes to do this. So you will have three minutes to do this, and then we will come back together. Sharing what you notice with other people can give you new ideas. Scientists do that all the time. So share your drawing with your partner. Then discuss these questions. So 
Sorry, Sadie. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, because we can't have partners, is if you want to share one of your questions, you can raise your hand and share it. Who wants to share one of their questions, one of their new questions? Victoria? How, how does your fingers move? How do your fingers move? Okay. Smith? What are fingernails made of? What are fingernails made of? Zari? What is your hand made of? What is your whole hand made of? Good. Any other questions? There's lots of questions I can think of. Aaron? What, what are the little, thing, the little lines underneath your fingernail? What are those little lines underneath your fingernail? What are they? Why are they there? Very good. Carla? Don't forget to unmute yourself. Carla, don't forget to unmute yourself. Carla, make sure we can't hear you. How do blood turn red from blue? Okay. How does your blood turn red from you blue? You can see that because if you look at the back of your hand and you see those little greenish blue lines, that's actually blood in there. So how does it change from this color that makes your hand have like greenish blue lines to red? Very good. Any other questions? Kingston? Why are there lines on your fingers? Okay, we kind of already have that. So make sure you're not repeating a question somebody else had. Zari? Why do you have to have fingerprints? Why do you have fingerprints? That's a really good one. And actually in one of our early, um, I think one of the first chapters in reading, we actually talk a little bit about fingerprints. So that's really cool that you had that question. Why do we have fingerprints? Where do they come from? Any other questions? I know you guys probably had a lot of questions. I hope you wrote them down, but... Ethan? Um, why does your um, palm, like, pop or something? Like, Say that again. Your wrist pops or something? Okay, why do your bones and your knuckles and your wrist, why do they make that popping sound? That's a really good question. Yes. Cullen? Why are the little lines right here? What? We've had a few questions. We've had that a few times, but okay. Zari? How does your... How, when you bend your fingers, how does it not break like your other ones? Good. Why? I know, but why do, when you bend your fingers, why do they not break like other bones would? Like if you broke, if you tried to bend right here, right here on your arm, it's going to break. So why do fingers not do that? Good. That's a really good question. Okay, Victoria? Why do you have so much skin on your fingers? Why do you have so much skin? Skin on your hand. Good. Zadie? Why can you, like, you can bend your finger this way, but you can't bend it back? Good question. You guys are starting to see you're getting the hang of it. At first, all the questions were just kind of regular, but now you're getting into better questions. Zadie said, why can you bend your fingers this way, but not the other way? Good. Carla, don't forget to unmute yourself. Press the mute button. The, the, were you born with, if you, if you didn't have this, how the lines work? Okay, so are you born yep. with the little lines on your hand? If you didn't, if you weren't born with it, what would you do? How would it work? Maybe do those lines do anything? Good, very good. Carla, don't forget to remute yourself. Ethan. Why are there bumps on your fingers? I know some of us have more bumps than others, but why are there little, I can see little bumps. Why are there little bumps on your fingers? Erin? Why does it look like every other finger has a knuckle on it, but your thumb? Why does it look like every other finger has an extra knuckle except for your thumb? Very good. Zari? Why do you have to have like little circles on your fingers? Why do you have like these right here? On the back of your hand? Yeah, why do we have these little circles back here? Very good. Okay, we'll take Victoria, and then does anybody else, raise your hand right now if you have another question. Okay, we'll do Victoria, then Carla, then Smith, then Zadie, and then we're going to move on, okay? Victoria? Why does your veins shrink? Why do your veins, 
Did you say why do your veins show? Yes. Why can you see your veins? Very good. Carla, don't forget to unmute. And then mute again when you're done. How do, you, do things go up when you bend your fingers? Okay, good. Why do, when you bend your fingers, why do these go up? Why do these bumps get bigger? Very good. That's a good question, Carla. Okay. Thank you. Smith. Victoria had my same question. Oh, Victoria had the same question. Good one. Why can't we see our veins? Very good. Okay, Zadie, and then we have to move on. I know we could come up with questions all day long. That's what good scientists do. That's what this whole activity is for. You can just look at something that you thought you knew, like the back of your hand, and you can think of brand new questions every day. Even I can. Zadie, oh. last one, and then we'll move on. Why do your fingers get shrivelly when they're in water? Very I good. Don't well, you can tell her later because we got to move on. What? Thank you. Though. Well, it's okay, a we don't have a whole lot of time, so we're gonna move on to the next step, Zadie. Okay, my video is still going. If you and your partner thought of even more questions, older students. Write down the most interesting questions that you discussed. If you run out of space, you can use the back of your paper. Younger students, share your favorite questions with your teacher. They can write these questions on the board. You can add another question mark to your wonder page for each new question that you come up with. So what you're going to do now is any questions that you heard that you didn't think of, go ahead and write a couple of them down on your paper. I'll give everybody two minutes to do that. I'll give you actually a minute and a half. So go ahead right now, be thinking of the questions that other people asked. The ones that you found really, really interesting that you had never thought of, write that down on your paper. You have a minute and a half to do now that. Try zooming in even closer. Circle the part of your drawing that includes one fingernail. Connect a line from that circle to the magnifying glass. Then go to the next step. So find the part of your drawing that has one fingernail, then connect that part of your drawing to this magnifying glass, because you're going to do a close-up. When you're done, give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Zari. Thank you, Carla, Smith, Cullen, Michaela, Zadie, Ethan, Kingston. Do you have a question? What's your question, Kingston? What do you mean by uh, connecting So you're going to draw, so you, in your drawing, you have a fingernail. You're going to draw a line from that fingernail to this magnifying glass. Just to show, hey, this is this. So Victoria, thank you. I saw your thumb up. Kingston? So you mean like, draw it in the magnifying glass? Not yet. You're just drawing a line. Let me show you. Like this. From one of these fingernails, too. So you're just drawing a line like that. Okay, okay. everybody got that step finished? Okay. Let's move on to the next step. Look even more closely at this fingernail on your own hand. Then, Draw your fingernail and fingertip in the magnifying glass. When you think of any questions, write them down and use arrows to connect your drawing to the question. I'm going to give you one minute to do this. So draw your fingernail and your fingertip. You're doing like a close-up of that fingernail in that box. And then if you come up with any questions after you draw the fingernail, pay close attention to your fingernail. Are there lines? Is there like a long white part or a short white part? Is there a really big lighter part at the bottom? So draw your fingernail in detail and then write any other questions that you may have that you come up with about your fingernail only. You have one minute. When you hear the timer, remember, pencil down, hands up. Yes, Ethan, what's your question? 
draw your, look at your fingernail and draw a detailed picture of your fingernail in this magnifying glass. Yes, Carla. How come your thumb is bigger than your other fingers? That's a good question. That is a good question. You could, maybe you could probably find the answer to that on the internet somewhere. Why is your thumb on yes, Ethan. Here. Just your fingernail. Um, so like, just a close up of that. So look at your fingernail and look. Grande. Is your white yeah. part Can long you or short? Feet? Do you Mom? have a lighter part in here? So feet? draw that picture and then you can think of questions about that. Oh, time's up. Time's up. Oh, thank you, Carla and Michaela. They remembered. Once we get used to this after a week, it'll be a consequence if you're still writing because that means you're not following directions the first time. Okay, you can put your hands down as soon as the next part of the activity begins. How many questions have you been able to come up with? Count up all the questions on your page. Then write this number down in your curiosity counter. So this means you're only counting the questions you wrote down. How many questions did you write down? And then the curiosity counter is this piece down in the bottom corner. You just write it on that line. Once you're done with that, thumbs up. Thank you, Cullen. Zari, Carla, do you have your thumb up? I can't tell. Oh, Carla, Zadie, Michaela, Aaron, Victoria, Kingston, and Ethan, what's your question? Thank you, Smith. You count, you look at the questions that you wrote down, count how many you wrote on your paper, and then put it, put that number on the line down here where it says curiosity counter, I have blank questions. That's where you write how many questions did you write on your paper? Yes, Carla. I had put up one of the reactions mm -hmm. as the thumbs up. Oh, very good. Very good. So you're figuring zoom out. You guys know it better than I do at this point. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next step. Now that you've come up with all these questions, it's time to think about which one are you most curious about? Choose one question that you think would be interesting to investigate in the future. Younger students, your teacher will give you another sheet of paper so that you can write down your favorite question. Older students, look at all the questions you already wrote and circle the one that you're most curious about. Once you've figured out the one that you're most curious about, Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to circle it. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Cullen. Remember, thank you, Smith. Oh, thank you, Zari. I see it now. Thank you, Kingston. Ethan. So find on your paper this the question that you are most interested to find the answer, circle that one question. And then give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Aaron. These questions. Which one are you most interested in finding the answer to? And then circle that one. Thank you, Zadie. Thank you, Ethan. Okay, we're going to move on to, I think it's the last step of the activity, which is perfect timing because we're almost out of time. Today, you drew something ordinary to help you observe closely and think of questions. I know that when I try this same thing, no matter what object I choose to draw, I'm always surprised by just how many questions I start having about that object. Thinking of questions is the first step to learning new things, the way a scientist does. Keep it up this year. Keep drawing and noticing interesting things.
check out the curiosity wheel that we link to in the extras. We think you'll find it's a good way to think of new things to, to explore and wonder about. Have fun and stay curious. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't get to the curiosity wheel because that requires you to pay for the whole website. So, but at least we can do that. And so that is kind of what is important when we're doing science and really any new thing that we learn this year. When we do science, we read and we discuss what's in the textbook, but I also want you to feel comfortable asking questions about what we're reading. Now make sure it's a good question, make sure it's not silly, and make sure you ask it at an appropriate time. But always ask questions. If I know the answer, I will tell you. If I don't know the answer, I'm not going to make up an answer. I'm going to say, that's a really good question. I'm not sure of the answer. And then either if it's something we can look up the answer to really quick, we'll do that all together. Or sometimes if it's really, really interesting, I will give you a chance for an extra science grade to go home and just write, look it up, find some information, and present it to us the next morning. Okay. So, any questions about science this year? Erin? Are we going to get homework some days if we don't finish pages? Well, science you'll have homework in every time we do it. Every time we have science class, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you'll have science homework. But I will tell you, Wednesday night science homework isn't due until the next Monday. So, because it's not due until the next time we have science. So the homework that gets assigned in science on Wednesday, you don't have to turn in until the next Monday morning. However, you can turn it in whenever you finish, as long as it's before that next Wednesday morning. Carla, what's your question? My question is, um, will we um, usually use our book and kind of use the projector? Um, for science, we'll mostly use our book. I, there will be times where there are charts or pictures that I may project onto the board just so we can look at it bigger. And I can point to things so that you know exactly where in your book to look. Yes, Victoria. What will your science homework be like? It will be, I think you guys did the outlines and the vocabulary last year. And then sometimes you'll have um, pages where there will be like a chart or some kind of picture and you answer questions by looking at that picture and um, looking at what it says in the book. But a lot of times that will be more independent practice if we have time. Sometimes we don't have time for it, sometimes we do. I will always have it available, but sometimes we may not get to it. Okay, so it is time because we have to pack up and then go home. Go ahead, this I wonder sheet goes in your science folder. Remember your, the science side of your science and social studies folder. Remember your questions because if you want to go home and look it up, you got to remember it. So look at your question before you put it away, put it in your memory, and then put that I wonder sheet in the science side of your science and social studies folder. Wait, wait, do we? Yes, Victoria. Do we have to look up the question that we don't have to You should. Well? Otherwise, what was the point? So put that, look at your question that you circled, put it in your memory, and then put it in the science side of your science and social studies folder. And that's it. Once you're done with that, we'll see you tomorrow. Zoom friends. And school friends, we'll go ahead and start getting ready to go. Bye. See you tomorrow morning. Bye. Uh, let's see, girls Bye. Math time is different. I'll send an email tonight. So the math time is and the math and reading time is different on Thursdays, but I'll send an email home about that. Okay. Bye. Okay.